The most important question when reviewing a hot air station is, does it get the job done? Because if the station you have can't do the job, what good is it? That's the problem I had with this station, the Hiwa 959D. It's a cheap station. I think it cost around $60 on Amazon. It had decent reviews, seemed to work well enough, so I thought that's all that mattered. I was wrong. When I first got it, I used it on some spare boards and I was able to remove small components like capacitors and IC chips, so I thought it worked fine and that I could use it on more advanced repairs. But again, I was wrong. The first signs of trouble were when I tried to remove a small MOSFET off an original Xbox One. It took a long time and a lot of heat to get it off, but it did work. At this point, I didn't know if it was the station or if it was user error. I had practically no experience with a hot air station, so I just chalked it up to user error. I figured I was just doing something wrong. Then I went to replace an HDMI retimer chip on an Xbox One X and continued to have difficulty. I had the temperature basically at maximum and the airflow all the way up. The chip did eventually come off, but it just didn't feel like the station was getting the board anywhere near hot enough to melt the unleaded solder. It was about this point that I decided I needed to upgrade my station. The cheap station was causing me to get frustrated and start to dread doing any work. I just knew I'd try removing something that should take only one minute, only to still be trying to get it off some 10 minutes later and not being able to and eventually give up. The final straw was when I tried to remove a larger MOSFET off that same Xbox One console. I turned the temperature all the way up and just held the nozzle over the chip. At this point, I didn't care that much about the Xbox One and if I could get it to work. I just wanted to see if this hot air station could get this chip off. And it never budged. I knew I needed something better. So looking around at the other people in this realm and what they're using, I decided to go with the Atten ST862D. It seems to be the station of choice for Lewis Rosman and Northridge Fix, and if it works for them, who am I to argue? So I bought one. Now, I'll leave a link in the description for Amazon, but honestly, you can get about the same price with less shipping time by buying from either Lewis Rossman or Northwards Fix. And I would encourage you to go through them rather than Amazon because helping others in this business is better than helping Amazon. I'll leave links to their stores as well for the station. Now that I have the station set up, the only important question is, does it get the job done? Can it remove that MOSFET my cheap station could not? Still taking a while, but look at that. Oh my gosh. Wow. Smell good. Well. Oh my gosh, that came off so quickly. I'm literally mind blown right now. Quite simply, yes, it removed it. The moral of my story continues to be don't buy cheap equipment. If you're trying to do difficult work, you don't need to add any more complications or issues to your job. Yes, this station was four times more expensive, but that doesn't matter if the cheap station is not able to do the job you bought it for. It could be a dollar, but if it doesn't work, it's a waste of a dollar. In this case, it was a waste of $60, another lesson learned. What I'm trying to say is, if you find yourself in a similar situation, unsure how much to spend on a hot air station, or, and this includes a soldering iron because you know there are cheap soldering irons and middle tier and very, very expensive ones. But if it's something you plan to use often enough on jobs like this, you should spend the extra amount to get something quality. This cheap station might be okay for very thin boards or very small components, but it clearly can't handle the larger pieces and thicker boards. It's just not putting out enough heat. I don't think it's anywhere close to 400, 500 degrees Celsius coming out of that nozzle. That makes it pretty much useless to me for what I wanted to use it for. And I don't want you to make the same mistake and waste your money. 
save up the difference and it'll save you in the end. I've already managed to fix that Xbox One X using the Atten that I couldn't fix using the cheap station because I could not resolder the HDMI retimer chip. But I was able to do that with the Atten. Hopefully that video will be out soon. I'll put a card here when it is. A few more of those and it's paid for itself. You can't argue with that. So thank you for watching. I hope you learned something useful and really hope you do consider putting in a little extra for a quality hot air station. I'd hate for the frustration of a cheap station to lead to your giving up on pursuing repairs like this. And please leave a comment down below if you've had either a good or bad experience with a cheap hot air station or if you have a recommendation for another hot air station that's cheaper than the Atten and can still get the job done. It's possible my cheap station's just a dud and others work well, but for now, I'm enjoying the Atten. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it.